Welcome back. It is Saturday, June 10th, and our three favorite picks in the MLB are on the way. You know who we are. It's Austin, joined by Logan. If you are new to our channel, do us a favor. Go down below, hit that subscribe, and we got three picks. But first off, Logan, let's recap yesterday. So close to the 4-0 sweep, but hey, we'll take a 3-1 in one day. No complaints here. Almost up 2.5 units. Cardinals minus 1.5. A made great call from you, Logan. A 1.5 unit play. It was looking great, and then they really wanted to make you sweat, make you earn those one and a half units. A great plus value play, though. Now, who made us earn it? Didn't really make us earn it much. Is Freeman and uh, JD Martinez get the hit parlay done in the first inning, and the Marlins, White Sox, Nerfy Cashes. Our only loss was the Tigers plus a half in the first five. They had their chances there, but did not get it done losing the first five, two to one. But hey, we'll take a three in one day. I know the edits won't be as normal. We're both in a different change of scenery. We'll be back tomorrow for our normal edits, but you'll have to stick through it. I do want to mention though we do have iowa if you do live in iowa listen up because they got bet 365 it's there for you guys so if you want to sign up you can get 365 dollars in bonus bets just check down below to celebrate all you have to do is sign up with our link top link in the description deposit ten dollars make a one dollar money line bet on any MLB team today, even if it loses, you'll still get $365 in bonus bets. But Logan, it's a great Saturday, a great time to be alive. I heard you got a free winner for the kids. What you got? Yeah, we, we hit that plus value winner yesterday. And you know what? I'm, I'm going for another plus value play in this one. And it's a money line. We're going to the Red Sox versus Yankees, a great rivalry. I'm taking the Red Sox money line plus 106 odds on Fenders. Currently your best value in this one. I love this rivalry. It's sometimes pretty hard to bet this rivalry, actually, because both teams, you know, have each other's number. But without Judge, I just don't know how you can trust the Yankees at home to get it done in this one. I know common wisdom might be, oh, well, the Yankees will bounce back. But are you sure about that? Like, I, I'm not sure. And I think the Red Sox are a worthy spot to take them on plus money right now that, that we're getting. Who starts for the Yankees today? It's Domingo Herman, 3.69 ERA and a .95 whip on the air for Herman. He's been okay, but even though the whip is below one, his expected ERA, something you got to look at, is still 4.19, which I just find fascinating because usually the whip uh, being under one is like an indication that the pitcher ERA might regress, but it actually, it, the expected ERA is a little bit higher. And I know when Domingo Herman sometimes has his you know, erratic performances, I think the, the Red Sox could capitalize on that. Boston's only hitting 230 on the road this year, but I think there will be run opportunities against Domingo Herman. We know the Red Sox aren't obviously as, as good as they are at Fenway, but look at these Boston hitters versus Herman because they faced him before. Verdugo, 5 for 12 with a home run. McGuire, 3 for 6 with a home run. Turner, 1 for 3. Now, Rafael Devers, 3 for 22. That's not going to cut it. I, I need better Rafi Devers, but I, I expect a good hitter like him to at least make Domingo Herman work. And I think there will be run opportunities against him today. Now, the question is, will they provide Tanner Houck enough run support? I really hope so. Tanner Houck on the year, 5.46 ERA, 1.32 whip on the year. Those numbers are, are not that great. But if you actually look at his expected ERA, which is something we're comparing these two starting pitchers, his expected ERA is only 3.85. So that's kind of an indication. Maybe he's due some positive regression in his favor. If you look at Tanner Houck as well, 79th percentile on whiff percentage, 74th percentile on barrel percentage. Both of those metrics are actually really big against a team like the Yankees because we know the Yankees are, are kind of a boomer bust team. They're not a death by a thousand cuts team that just gets the base hit after base hit after base hit. No, they do their damage when they're getting either home runs or extra base hits, some doubles, and just kind of you know running up the score that way. So if he's missing barrels and he's getting those Yankees hitters to whiff, I actually do really like his, his chances today. And their last five games even. Without Judge, the Yankees are only hitting 196. Yes, they're hitting below 200 without Aaron Judge. He does make a big difference because he makes the starting pitcher have to sometimes pitch around him. And that that gives the other guys in the order uh, the advantage. And you look at these Yankees hitters versus Hauk. They faced him before, and they haven't had much success. LeMahieu 0 for 9. Rizzo 0 for 2. Donaldson 1 for 7. Glaber Torres 1 for 11. So you look at all those averages. If he, if he do, it can carve up all of those hitters... Yeah, I will certainly live with the consequences of this. But the last point of note, and the, and the thing that makes me a little bit nervous, is Boston is 17th in bullpen ERA. The Yankees first in bullpen ERA. I know it's it's always trust. It's hard to trust a team uh, with such a, a bullpen discrepancy. But the Red Sox bullpen, even though they does they do scare me, I just don't trust the Yankees offense to be able to hit them like they should. Because yes, there could be run opportunities late, but I expect them to be able to hold whatever lead they might have. Uh, through five innings and hopefully we can cash this bet i do like the plus money we're getting in this rivalry series and i'm going to be taking the red sox as my pick today but austin player prop goon what do you got for us 
Yeah, I mean, I do want to talk about Anthony Rizzo, a guy on the Yankees. I was looking at him for the hit parlay and six straight games, I believe, without a hit. So maybe he's due. I, I was thinking, oh, he's due, but I'm glad I've been avoiding him because he's really in a slump. So we'll see how that Yankees team goes. But as for my pick, we're not necessarily a player prop, not necessarily a game pick. It's going to be a combo of both. And let's talk about it. And I'll give some pivots if maybe you can't take this on whatever book you're on. And I'm going to go to Ronald Acuna Jr. to record a hit. And the Nationals and Braves over nine and a half. You're going to have to input this as a same game parlay. Currently plus 125 on DraftKings. Just put it on FanDuel. It's plus 114. So obviously, if you have a DraftKings account, definitely take advantage of it there. Not sure what it is on Bet365, but you can probably do the same thing. Now, let's talk about this because honestly, if you have a regular book and maybe you can't do a same game parlay like this, obviously, the natural pivot would just be take Nationals and Braves over. However, that line was sitting at 10 on some books. And so I look at this and I rather go to the over nine and a half because I'm really just saying, you know, if these teams are going to combine and get up close to that. Acuna is probably going to get a hit, statistically speaking. But let's talk about exactly why I think my internet might be going in and out. That's what happens when you're on the road. But either way, let's dive into why I like this exact pick. And let's talk about Acuna Jr. get him out of the way. Now, yesterday, he went 0 for 4. So what are the odds he goes back-to-back games going 0 for? Don't necessarily know if that's too likely. He's also batting 390 versus four-seam fastballs, as we'll talk about in just a second. Mackenzie Gore, who's going to start for the Nationals, there's about 60% four-seam fastballs. I think Acuna is 0 for 2 against Gore. I'm confident Acuna gets a hit. Now, why do I like the over in this game? Because if you look at yesterday, you took the over yesterday. Yeah, no, you got no chance. The final score is 2-3. to three. They just did not get it done. The Nats scored in the first inning. That was basically all they could get done. But you look at yesterday, the teams combined 3 for 15 with runners in scoring position. As I talked about, Ronald Acuna Jr., hitless. Austin Riley, both went hitless. So I look at these two teams, those two players, what are the likelihood both of them go over again? These are two guys that the Braves rely on to score runs, and I anticipate them bouncing back. Now, like I talked about, Mackenzie Gore is going to start for the Nationals. 3.66 ERA and a 1.42 whip. That ERA is great. Expected ERA is at 4.13, so some regression's coming, but you look at him. 43% hard hit percentage. That's 31st percentile in the majors. Look, Gore's first start of the year was a good one against the Braves. Five innings pitched, only three hits, one earned round. I think he walked four guys. But I still think this Braves offense, we know how talented it is. We saw what they did to Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. They can do that to any pitcher and Gore, a guy that's allowed a home run in six of his last seven starts. He's obviously a guy that's going to throw 60% fastballs, and he throws those at like 95, 96 miles per hour. If you're throwing a fastball, you miss your location up top. Yeah, there's probably a good chance that a, ball, a guy like in this whole Braves lineup is all littered with guys that can put the ball into the bleachers. So I certainly think they're going to get some runs up on Mackenzie Gore. And then when it comes to the bullpen, they'll have some chances there. Now, as for the other side, we can't really likely not going to have the Braves scoring 10 runs carrying us to victory, although I will allow it if that's what happens. The Braves are going to start Jared Schuster, and we're going to need some runs for the Nationals here to get an over at 10. But we look at Jared Schuster, 4.99 ERA, 1.34 whip. He's been better as of late, but the lefty Schuster, He's had some bad, bad struggling percentiles. Let's talk about him. Seventh percentile on chase rate. 13th percentile in K percentage. Sixth percentile in walk percentage. 24th percentile in hard hit percentage. 10th percentile in average exit velocity. This guy is one not missing bats. And when he gets hit, it gets hit pretty hard. So I trust them to just get it going. Nationals, our team, doing really well against lefties. Fifth best batting average. Seventh best OPS versus lefties this season. Schuster pitched against them in his first start of the year. Four earned runs, four and two-thirds innings pitched. If you look at Schuster's numbers recently, you say, hey, he's actually pitching really well in this month or, you know, in May. Yeah, I would not read too far into that because he got to go up against the Mariners, Phillies, and Athletics. All teams bottom 10 in OPS versus lefties. I think this team will come out here in the Nash- Nationals, put up some runs. I think the Braves can put up some runs. We get to the bullpen. The Braves do have the 10th best bullpen ERA, but we know every bullpen can give up runs. And then you got the Nationals, third worst bullpen ERA. So at the end of the day, I think this one's a pretty solid one. I think Ronald Cunha Jr. is going to bounce back, get a hit. And I like the over in this game as a regular pick. Just wanted to move it down from 10 to 9.5. Also get plus 125. I think it's pretty solid. We'll take our shot at that. But, Logan, I think you know what time it is. Let's get the music going. We haven't heard this music in a long, long time. And uh, we we desperately need it because I think the people out there know what time it is. Let's get it going. Yeah, rock music's here. Nerfy Nation time, baby. Six week outs. That's all we're asking for. And I think we can get it. But as for which one we're going to go for, trying to go for two in a row, we're going to go to a pretty decent one. There were a couple we considered, but we're going to – a different one, and I think you probably do. You, if you looked at the slate, let's be honest. If you looked at the slate, you knew where we we're going. 
We don't have to sugarcoat this. We're going to our man, Sandy Alcantara. He's going to be on the mound. Logan, talk about him in a second. But taking Marlins and White Sox, taking the no first thing once again. So when we took yesterday, he cashed out. No reason for us not to run it back. Now, before we get to Sandy and Logan, we'll talk about him in a second. We're going to need Michael Kopech to come out here and do his job. We know he's cost us some money before. He's nine and three on no one first innings. We were a courtesy of one of those three losses. We tossed a couple meatballs out there, but we've talked to the Marlins time and time again. 29th and first inning runs. Kopech is a righty. It's the Marlins team that is not hitting righties all too well. You got Soler, who has great splits versus lefties, struggles against righties. I certainly think Kopech is good enough to get us three outs. Talk about Sandy. Hype him up for a little bit. Hello, Logan. Yeah, our our uh, nerfy goat uh, is on the mound today. Sandy Alcantara. He starts for the Marlins. You just bet a Sandy nerfy. You just, this is just one of those bets that yes, you do get a little too comfortable. You can kind of like bet it and forget it. Alcantara eleven and one on nerfies this season. I mean, that's just incredible. He's it's one of those pitchers that even in, with a runner in scoring position, it doesn't normally face him. So hopefully, I'm not I'm not jinxing him today. He faces a White Sox team. There's 26 in first inning runs. They are a slow starting offense, just like the Miami Marlins. If they're going to score. It's usually not in the first inning. You know, the over under is set to eight and a half, which I do kind of want to mention. That's a little bit high. And I could see this one sneaky going over, but just keep the runs out of the first inning with these two pitchers. I, I have faith. Kopech throws hard. He is hard to see first time through the order. Now, if he misses location, yeah, it might end up in the seats. But you know what? He's going to be good for us today. Nerfy Nation, let's fly the flags. Let's keep this winning going. Kopech owes us some money. But, yeah, you're right, Logan. This is a weird one, given that the teams just combined for three runs yesterday. But either way, I really like this one. We trust Sandy. He's always been nice to us. We tr- certainly think Kopech can get his job done. And six quick outs, wave these flags once again. Hey, we'll take our chances at it. So those are three favorite picks, two-plus value picks in there. That no one first inning at minus 120 on Caesars. Let's have a great Saturday. We'll be back again in our same time, same place, and the normal editing and all that tomorrow morning. We'll see you guys then. Logan and Austin, we're signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one.